origin of medical technology can be traced back several centuries to approximately 1000 BC. Back then, laboratories were a small room in physicians' homes, offices, or even hospital wards and only consisted of a table and a microscope. Physicians collected samples and tested and treated patients. They were the only medical professionals. In the early 1900s, a new medical professional appeared. They were deemed medical laboratory technicians. By 1928, the Board of Registry started certifying laboratory technicians and required individuals to have graduated from an approved school and pass a registry exam. From this point on, the medical laboratory profession has snowballed in growth. Follow along as we take you on a journey from the very beginning of the medical laboratory to the complexity of today's testing. Year Analysis since doctors have been treating patients, urine has been one of the primary specimens that they have used. To fully understand the importance of uroscopy, you must first understand the beliefs of the time. In 400 BCE, Hippocrates hypothesized that there were four humors within the body. An imbalance in any one of these elements meant illness and disease would soon follow. Urine was believed to be the filtrate of these four humors. This and the fact that it was so easy to obtain a sample made it the ultimate window into the inner workings of the body. A variety of non-invasive tests and observations were created to facilitate the diagnostic process. For example, they would taste a sample and while this wasn't the most delicious drink of the time, they realized that if it tasted sweet, the patient had a problem, a disease we know as diabetes. Nowadays, we know that it is not always the case. We have scientific laboratories where we can take a urine sample, spin it down in a centrifuge, and look at it on a slide under a microscope. There is no doubt that urine has been an excellent diagnostic tool that has stood the test of time. As useful as urine is, there is another body fluid that is even more practical that we use more often in today's labs. Blood testing. Though believed to be secondary to uroscopy, early scientists didn't discount blood as a useful diagnostic tool. Too much or too little blood could cause illness and bloodletting was performed. They even believed that astrological conditions dictated the most favorable times for bleeding and doctors and psychics would create elaborate charts for patients and clients. Blood letters would open a vein in the arm, leg, or neck by tying off the area and slicing the vein lengthwise, and then they would let the blood pour into a bowl. Medical workers today also know the significance of blood samples over just bloodletting, which is only performed today for a few select conditions. Everything from glucose levels to complex genetic conditions can be tested instantly with so little as a single drop of blood from a finger poke. Many people get blood work done on a monthly, weekly, or even daily basis, and thanks to the observations of generations before, doctors have this vital piece of the puzzle with which to assist them. We have come a long way in the laboratory when we're dealing with different types of machinery and devices. Microscopes, for instance, like the microscope here, is characterized by its stability and its sophisticated, efficient focusing system. This is what we have today. The counterbalance scale and weights are another manual device used in the lab for weighing. Now we've saved time and are more accurate when using the digital scale. In addition to this, the Holter monitor used to be a 75 pound backpack that only recorded a single lead of the heart's activity. Now we are familiar with the Holter monitors such as this, having five to seven leads and a bit more portable. And how about these syringes? I definitely think the ones we use these days are a lot less intimidating. Let's not forget the good old hemocytometer, sitting and counting all those cells by hand. When the automated cell counter came along, I bet the laboratory technicians were relieved. Lastly are these great sterilizers. Presently, we have autoclaves that can be a lot smaller and weigh a lot less. In conclusion, the machinery and devices have vastly evolved throughout the years, making them more efficient, smaller, and more accurate.
the OSMT. The Ontario Society of Medical Technologists, or OSMT, is the voice of the medical laboratory technologists and medical laboratory assistants and technicians throughout Ontario. Founded in 1963, the OSMT is a member-driven, non-profit society governed by a board of directors, aided by an executive director and office staff. OSMT representatives are active volunteers from the OSMT membership who organize, provide leadership, and serve as advocates of the profession in a rapidly changing social and political environment. The OSMT represents the common interests of all medical laboratory technologists and assistants and technicians in the province of Ontario. Why is it important to belong to your professional society? To stay informed and stay current. To a firm sense of pride in being a laboratory professional. To access continuing education and professional development. Increase employment opportunities. Enjoy benefits. To strengthen the collective voice of laboratory professionals. To participate and make a difference.